Thousands of years ago, earth movements shaped the main outlines of our coasts. These movements, helped by the mighty power of the waves, formed inlets and bays. In his quest for food from the sea, man sought out the more sheltered bays and there built his homes and established a fishing community. In this little bay, the fishermen have for generations hauled up their fishing boats between the tides for safety. In larger bays, larger villages grew up and harbours were built to protect the boats from the rough seas. As you see in this map, the fishing village is situated in a natural opening in the coastline where access to the sea is possible all the year round. In these favourable natural surroundings, the village prospered and cottages clustered round the harbour. Let us follow the daily life of this fishing village. In the early morning, some of the men return from their night's fishing, while for others, the day is just beginning. Some leave to work on the land, but most of them go down to the harbour. Potting for shellfish is now in season, so hoping for a good catch, the fisherman takes out an extra crab pot. Some fishermen are already setting out for the potting grounds. These are usually about a mile from shore. The men set out for their day's fishing. While they're away, the daily life of the village goes on. The children go to school. In the centre of the village stands the church, built of stone quarried from the surrounding hills. This is a fisherman's church. The pictures on the windows show that the ways of fishing have changed little since Bible times. Down at the harbour, other fishermen are at work. From time to time, the fishing nets are taken out of the boats to be dried ready for tanning. The harbour wall makes an ideal place on which to spread them out. And the tanning will preserve them against the constant hard use. While the men are drying out the nets, their wives are hanging out the washing. A woman's work is never done. The shopping is part of the morning's routine. Vegetables are plentiful in the village. They are grown in the surrounding fields, which are very fertile and run right down to the edge of the sea. The map shows the agricultural land around the village. The parts marked in now are arable land and those marked in now are pasture land. Out at sea, the fisherman is hauling in his catch for the day. The crabs crawl into the hole at the top of the crab pot to get at the bait and are unable to escape again. A good haul, three dozen crabs in his baskets today. By the late afternoon, the fisherman has returned to the harbour. And after his long row home, his wife knows that he will be ready for a good meal. School is over and the children come home. For the children and the crab fishers, the day's work is over. But work is only just beginning for the pilchard fishermen, as pilchards have to be caught at night. The bundles they are carrying contain food, which will be very welcome when they are out at sea in the small hours of the morning. These men come down to their boats shortly before sunset during the pilchard season. The men prepare for the night's fishing and cast off. As the sun is going down, 
the boats slip one after another out of the harbour. This evening, pilchards have been sighted near the bay, so the boats will not have to make a very long trip. By sunset, the boats are spread out in the bay. As darkness falls, the men cast the pilchard nets over the starboard side. The net hangs in the sea like a huge curtain. The men know where the fish are and let the net drift in the path of the shoal of pilchards. Fishing of some kind is carried on during all the 12 months of the year. Here is the fishing cycle in waters near the bay from January until December. Drifting for pilchards from July until November, Herring fishing overlaps the pilchard fishing and the season runs from November until January. January until July is the time for mackerel. From January to April the catch is flatfish, ray, skate, conger, etc. The potting season for crabs runs from April until October. In August, the pilchard fishing is at its height. It is still dark when the pilchard fishermen start to haul in their nets. The small mesh of the fishing net catches the pilchards by their gills. That is why most of them are dead by the time they are hauled aboard. At break of day, as the village is coming to life, the pilchard boats, heavily laden with their night's catch, are homeward bound. On nearing the harbour, the men begin the task of removing all the fish from their nets. Each pilchard has to be removed from the mesh by hand. This boat has a catch of over 50,000 pilchards. Next, they are divided up into heaps of 200 and put into baskets. They are then ready to be hauled up onto the quayside. All hands help to clear the net when there is a large catch. This is hard work after spending all night at sea. Damaged fish are thrown to the gulls. Another 200 is counted and up she goes from baskets into boxes. 120 to a box. Ice is packed into the boxes to keep the fish fresh on its long journey to the inland towns. The boxes are now ready to be stacked up on the lorries. The fishermen get their pay, a share of the value of the catch, which is now on its way to the towns by road and by rail. For the men who fish by night, it is now time for rest. But for others, another day's work starts in this village by the sea. <laughs>